Welcome to our lecture online and here we're going to look a little bit more into the BJT transistor what we call the bipolar junction transistor and in particular the NPM N stands for negative, P stands for positive, it's how the semiconductor is doped. We also here have a basic, uh, what we have here is a basic circuitry of a NPN transistor, BJD transistor. We have the voltage at the collector, we have a load on the collector, we drive current through the load to the transistor and to the emitter. We also have a voltage applied to the base current so we can control the base current and as we increase the base current we we'll increase the current from the collector to the emitter. The difference or I should say the ratio of the current from to the collector or from the collector divided by the current from the base that's called the current gain and typically it's anywhere from 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 to 200 so we can have quite a bit of gain between the base current and the collector current. Now this diagram here attempts to explain, and I say attempts to explain because at first when you first look at it it's a little bit confusing, but it does explain how the relationship acts between the base current and the collector current and the voltage applied to the transistor. At the bottom axis here we have the voltage applied to the collector. And the greater the voltage to the collector, the greater the current that you can have but to a limit. Here we see on the vertical axis the current from the collector and ultimately that's what we're trying to do with a transistor. We're trying to increase the base current to get an increased current on the collector. In this particular case we have a gain of about 100 which means for every, for every milliamp of current we get through the base we should have 100 milliamps of current through the collector. Although we start off with intervals of 100 microamps on the base current. What this is basically telling you is when you apply a base current of 100 microamps you get roughly a current of 10 milliamps at the collector. When you increase the base current to 200 microamps, we now have 20 milliamps. So you see there's about a 100 to 1 gain between the base current and the collector current. Notice also that as you increase the voltage at the collector, you really don't get much more of an increase in the current. You can see that it requires a slight, more, a slight amount of increased base current to get an increase in the collector current. Another way of saying that, maybe a better way to say that is, let's say you apply a certain amount of base current, as you increase the voltage at the collector, you get a slight increase on the current of the collector, but not a lot. So by doubling or tripling or quadrupling the voltage at the collector, you just get a very slight increase in the uh, current at the collector, even though you keep the base current the same. That's maybe a better way of looking at it which means that there's a very linear relationship between the base current and the collector current even if the voltage applied varies by quite a bit. Another thing that we need to look at is that there's no collector current whatsoever if there is no current at the base. So if the base current is zero, you'll get zero collector current. That's what we call the cutoff region. And as you, as you begin to increase the base current, you begin to increase the collector current as well. So no collector current if there's no base current in an NPN transistor. We also have what we call here the saturation region. Notice what that means is that if you increase the base current that will result in no or, or little or no increase in the collector current at a certain voltage. So let's say that this was the voltage applied at the collector and you begin to increase the base current once you reach the threshold where base current is greater than zero, you begin to get collector current. But at some point, you get to what we call the saturation region, which means that as you increase the base current, there will, be not, there will not be any increase in the collector current. In this particular case, as an example, let's say we have a half a volt at the collector, from between the collector and the emitter, then you can, also you can only increase the base current to 200 microamps and after that any increase in the base current will not increase the collector current at all. At the greater voltage, notice that the saturation region is on a much higher base current. That means when you reach one volt between the collector and the emitter, now you can keep increasing your base current until you have 500 microamps of base current to give you a current at the collector of 50 milliamps. But then again, if you try to increase the base current, there will no longer be an increase in the collector current, so you don't want to operate here. 
What that really means is in a transistor, you want to apply enough voltage at the collector in such a way that you have a much greater range between the base current and the collector current and your transistor will work properly. At very low voltages, there's a very small range in which the transistor can operate before it saturates. At higher voltages, you have much more of a, a bandwidth, so to speak, in uh, the base current in which you can then control the collector current. So that's what this, that's what this graph indicates. Again, you want to have a certain minimum of collector voltage, otherwise you hit, the you hit the saturation point very quickly. And here you can see that the only way to increase your collector current is to simply increase the base current. And you can see that there's a virtually linear relationship between base current and collector current. As you increase the voltage at the collector, you will get a little bit higher uh, current at the collector for the same base current, but that increases very, very slightly. You can see that these lines go up just at a very, very slight slope. So even though you increase the collector voltage by a lot, you will not get much more of a current at the collector for the same base current. Hopefully that clears it up at least. That shows you the relationship between the base current and the collector current and how the voltage at the collector uh, plays a role in either hitting saturation or giving you a nice linear relationship between the two. And again, the current gain is always the ratio of the collector current divided by the base current, which is typically a number like 100, 150, or 200 for typical transistors. And again, that number is not an absolute constant, but close enough for our purpose. And that's a good overview for how transistors work. We're now ready to start looking at how we do circuit analysis with transistors in the circuits.